How many of you have ever had plans and dreams in your life that when faced with reality or in abilities, you have been forced to surrender and start in a new direction? Today, I want to speak to you about the life of a young man that was not overcome by the inabilities nor the impediments he had to confront, but had the remarkable resilience of a passionate human being striving to achieve his goals and how he became one of the 20th century's foremost photographer. His name was Ansel Adams. Hi, my name is Fran Rodriguez, and today I want to take you over Ansel Adams' life. His haunting landscapes of the American West help legitimize photography as an art form. First, I will go over Ansel Adams' early life, then I will review his artistic career. Starting with his early life, we can divide it between his childhood and his teenage years. So let's begin with his childhood. Ansel Adams was born on February 20, 1902 in the Fomo district of San Francisco, California, and was originally named Ansel Easton Adams. He was the only child of Charles Hitchcock Adams and Olive Gray. According to Ansel Adams' biographer, Mary Street Allender, when he was four years old in 1906 during the San Francisco earthquake, Adams was injured after the initial shake. He was thrown face first into a garden wall, breaking and disfiguring his nose. A doctor recommended that his nose be rearranged once he reached adulthood, but it remained crooked, which made mouth breathing necessary for the rest of his life. Adams was expelled from several private schools for being impatient and distracted. Due to these, when he was 12 years old, his father decided to remove him from school and consequently was tutored at home. At that age, Adams became interested in playing the piano, so he taught himself how to read music and play the piano. As a teenager, Adams had developed his love for playing the piano to a higher level. He wanted to become a professional concert pianist. When he was 14 years old, Adam visited for the first time Yosemite National Park, and during that stay, his father gave him his first camera. During the 1918 flu pandemic, Adams contracted the Spanish flu. He became a germaphobe. He was so paranoid, he was unable to touch anything without immediately watching his hands. But a visit to Yosemite National Park curing from this condition. He formed the Milan de Trio with a violence and a dancer, but he believed his more hands affected his performance. This made him turn more to photography. Even though he had a challenging childhood due to his hyperactive condition and later on on his teenage days with the small hands and illness, he did not give up on his future. He turned completely to his love for photography. So let us go over his photographic career, success, and achievements. Adam's first photograph were published in 1921. His primary photograph demonstrated detailed composition and sensitivity to tonal balance. During the mid-1920s, the fashion in photography was pictorialism, which strove to imitate paintings. Adams explored with these techniques as well as as hand coloring, but in 1923, he announced he will no longer use hand coloring. In 1925, he has chosen a more realistic approach that relied on sharp focus, aiding in contrast, precise exposure, and darkroom craftsmanship over pictorialism. In 1927, Adams' first portfolio was a success, earning nearly $3,900, an equivalent to $56,621 with 39 cents in today's dollar value. The 1930s was an era of productivity and experimentation for Adams. He enlarged the technical range of his work, emphasizing large forms and detailed close-up from mountains to factories. He also developed his uh, with Fred Archer, his famous zone system technique. In 1945, he was asked to form the first fine art photography department at the San Francisco Art Institute. In 1952, Adam was one of the founders of the magazine Aperture, 
which was intended as a serious journal of photography, displaying its best partitioners and newest innovations. In the 1960s, multiple mainstream art galleries, which had previously considered photos unworthy of exhibit alongside fine paintings, decided to show added images, primarily the former Kenmore Gallery in Philadelphia. In 1979, President Jimmy Carter commissioned Adams to make the first official photographic portrait of a U.S. president. At age 82, Adam died from a cardiovascular disease on April 27, 22, 1984. He died in the company of his wife, two children, and five grandchildren. In conclusion, even though he had many obstacles in his childhood and teenage days, Ansel Adams never stopped striving for a better future. He received numerous awards during his lifetime and posthumously, and several awards and places have been named in his honor, and in 2007, he was inducted into the California Hall of, Hall of Fame. Our critic George Char John Charkovsky wrote, Ansel Adams attuned himself more precisely than any photographer before him to a visual understanding of the specific quality of the light that fell on a specific place at a specific moment. This comment can be seen in one of Ansel Adams' remarkable quotes, and I finish with it. Sometimes I do get to places just when God's ready to have somebody click the charter. This concludes my Ansel Adams' art speech. Thank you for watching.